BMW M cars have always been about the driving experience. From the throttle calibration to the steering response, from the brakes to the suspension tuning, everything about an M car just has that little edge over its German rivals. It's always been about putting the power down rather than outright power. So the question is, does the fifth generation M3 carry this tradition? One of the biggest changes to BMW M cars in recent years is the engine. It's a twin turbo straight six. It's stupid smooth and has over 100 pound feet of twisting power over the previous generation's V8. Not to 60 is dealt with in under four seconds with this dual clutch transmission. Speaking of which, this seven speed dual clutch is what most M3s and M4s are being ordered with. The programming has been recalibrated from previous generations and it's much easier to use in day to day driving. Steering is made possible by electrons. This of course, like everyone else, is electrically assisted. But this is one of my favorite systems on the market. It's got great weight as long as you leave it in comfort mode and it's very direct. Brakes, although not carbon ceramic, bring the car to a stop immediately. Great pedal feel and honestly more stopping power than you'll ever need on the street. I was talking to the owner about this and he said that even on the track, owners with the carbon ceramic option uh, will change out the rotors for steel ones to preserve the life of the rotors. To me, that's a bit of a waste of the nine grand that BMW asked for the carbon ceramic upgrade. And if you're not at the track all the time, the steel brakes are the way to go. So how do all these aspects fit together? Well, in a word, well. The turn-in is immediate. I turn the steering wheel and I get a yes sir from the front end. Uh, the car rotates around you. Like every BMW, this has a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. And body roll, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's non-existent. The springs are stiff, but the dampers do a great job soaking up the bumps, uh, even though we don't have the adaptive M suspension on this car. The new M3, therefore, is very, very good. Everything about the new M3 is better on paper. The power, the speed, the handling, all of it is great. But somehow it's missing that little extra something. Somehow it's missing that end division magic that sets them apart from Mercedes AMG or Audi's RS. Maybe I'm missing the linear power band of a naturally aspirated engine, even if this twin turbo pulls harder down low. Maybe I'm missing a proper clutch and three pedal layout, even though the dual clutch shifts faster. Maybe I'm missing the organic feel of a hydraulic steering rack, even though this electric unit is one of the best in the business. It's the little details that set BMW apart. Maybe I'm just old school and nostalgic, but, which is why I prefer the M3s of yesteryear. But the new M3 is still an incredible machine. It's still far beyond its competitors and it definitely deserves that M badge. Latest M3 carry. <laughs> Sorry, I had an awkward pause in there. My B, my B, my B. And yet, it's not my favorite. Oh no. Cut, cut, cut. So close, so close. So close.